Do you think we can figure out this foreign fuse box? I already know the answer. And I'm warning you, before you watch this video, take a couple aspirin and a few shots of whiskey. Because it hurts. So magic happened and my brain caught up with the rest of me and I figured out that the wiring actually goes under through here Because then that puts everything where we need to be. I also got my book out again and We're gonna have to try to figure out what some of these stragglers are because I'm not exactly sure I don't see anything that that would go to so anyway <clears throat> We'll sort that out, but let me show you what the problem is here with this chart. So you got your handy little diagram, that's cute, right? Well, instead of just putting like the color of the wire on the wire like this, you would think, GN, that's green, right? Well, in America that would be green, but here that is actually yellow and black because they give you color codes and you have to sort out what's what and I just think that's so stupid why couldn't they just use Y for yellow or YB for yellow and black or whatever so that's part of our issue here is it takes a lot of thinking to make sense of this sometimes especially when all the wires that you have are faded like for example the thermo starter wire is in that's supposed to be black and okay this one's fine this one is black one of them it looks gray to me maybe i'm colorblind i don't know but anyway we'll sort this out we're we're making progress i uh what else i got antifreeze so we're good i got more hose we can finish that i want to redo this uh loom business this hard this stuff is brittle and it just breaks and peels away and I don't like that so I've actually got uh, some loom you can see there three quarter inch split loom I'll tape some of these up in places and then I'll slip some of that loom over and then clamp it with that so hopefully this will stay nice these fuses I found at the auto parts store I had to order them these are the German type automotive fuses so at least there is some German on this i need to wait on my new ones to show up because this one definitely is bad and i don't know about the rest of them i'll probably replace them all but it also occurs to me that i have no idea what amount they're supposed to be like what voltage they are color coded however i can't tell what colors they are anymore i guess that one was black but was it supposed to be or was it supposed to be like you know, they make them in green, yellow, white. I don't know. I really need to figure this out. Especially because this came from a dairy farm, so these may not be what really goes in there. If we look in the book, I'm not really sure if there's a section on fuse box only. There's that wiring chart. But it seems to me like I wish there was a list of... Here we go. Okay, six fuses are housed in one in a box and one in a separate holder. See figure 19. One in a separate holder, figure 19. Seven, voltage regulator fuse. Okay, that explains this that we have here, which I wondered what was going on. So that is actually, that was hooked to the voltage regulator, and I bet this other gray one was too. Okay, so, except number one, all fuses are of 8 amps, except number one, which is a 16 amp fuse. All fuses of, are 8 amps, except number one. And that doesn't match what we have here, because it appears that they're all black except for the second one. So something is not right there. Now the next question would be, did somebody flip-flop the wiring to the box because 
that position was bad and they moved something else that wasn't see those are the kind of tricks we just don't know uh, so at least we're making progress though we know that this was supposed to have a fuse in it and somebody took like the dash style fuse uh, so I will probably replace this with an inline glass fuse holder just because that'll be more close to what it was supposed to have and it will look better uh, if we get on our treasure map here again A1 so that would be the first position shows that it would be light blue and AN would be light blue and black so light blue and light blue and black and that is what's there position number two would be HR 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 would be gray and red and there's a gray and red there but up here we have brown to me it appears does that change over to see that's what I'm not understanding here HR HR I don't know if that really is in the right place or not C position looks like okay C3 would be G and B <clears throat> so we would have white which is B and G which is yellow and we have yellow but we don't have we have green instead of to me this looks like white what's the next one D4 no C C4 oh C4 there's a C4 and a C3 oh that's so confusing so C C3 was G which is yellow that's right but I don't see the exit from C3 it also shows yellow there's two yellows that go to C3 there's nothing that goes to okay <clears throat> I get this I get this now so one row one side of the fuse box is the letters and the other post is the numbers so if we start over number one number one would be the thing closest to us and it is z violet it's z violet oh and then a n which is light blue and black right a n and z and they are banded together so there's violet and black on the back terminal the back terminal are the i guess the back terminal is the numbers and the front terminal is the letters so then a is just light blue and it's coming out of here okay so that's correct position number two the number should have two hrs and hr was supposed to be gray and red and there are two hrs coming out of there but then in front we have in front we have on b we have m which is brown right b m brown we have that three we have two g's which are yellow and that's what they are and then c we have we have nothing on that c3 the c see that's what i don't get i got a wire here that's not really maybe perhaps it got put in the wrong place i'm not sure we're gonna have to figure that one out because green is v and that's not till number six six now i don't i don't know about that i'm not i'm not sold on what that's supposed to do maybe i'm missing something so we'll skip it for now position four 
<clears throat> C4. So C is B, which is white, and we have white. And then C4 uh, is GN, which is yellow and black, and we have that correct. <clears throat> then in D, D is HN. HN is gray and black. Okay. That should be in D position. Gray and black. And we have gray and black going in one side. And then in uh, the other side we just have H, which is gray. And that's correct. And then... Oh, this is so confusing. And then in position number E, VN, which is green and black. And we have green and black. And then E, the other one is in position 6, is just green because that's V. And that V, does that V go to... Where does it go? V. It goes to a block to the headlights. Now that is confusing because on mine, there's a green wire going into the flasher, but to me it looks like it's not correct. And I'm wondering if this green wire here is supposed to go back there. And that would make sense. So C three where that is hooked on now is not hooked up three g would go to more lights so it is possible that gosh i can't even follow this g is this line here it goes over here it goes into here g See, what's all this? I don't know. 14 and 15 are battery charge indicator, parking lights indicator. Oh boy. Battery light indicator, parking light indicator. Oh. Okay, well, we're going to have to double check on that because I'm not sure that this is right. But it would make no sense for two wires to go in and nothing come out, which would be three, which would be yellow, two G's, and that goes to up to the lights again. So maybe it's possible that they just tapped into the wrong place for this. Which one of these is the flasher? Uh, current replaceable... Option rear floodlight, rear parking light, fuel and battery, battery charge indicator, horn relay, voltage regulator, fuse box. Huh. I sure don't see the hazard flasher, which would be in line of some of these. See what's 19? 19 is 19 is safety and number plate lamp. That's not it. Number 17, insufficient oil pressure indicator. Those are indicators on the dash, so this is dash. 13 fuel sending unit. Oh, this is making me just tired of living. Sending unit for insufficient oil pressure, HN, which is gray and black, so that's good. We know that that wire is, in fact, it's coated. See, here's another fun fact. This wire looks black, right? Not really. It is really a gray wire with a coating over it, because if you follow it back here, there you can see it's gray and black. So they gave it like a heat shrink coating, which now you can't tell what color it is. But I'm not seeing where my hazard flasher is in this system. And it's probably right in front of my face and it's just hurting my feelings enough that I can't stand it. Because I sure don't see... I just sure don't see it. 
I mean, where would it be? <sighs> oh, good grief. Floodlights, battery charge, cooling. We're going to put this away because this is hurting us. We obviously don't know what we're doing on this. I want to do want to see the voltage regulator. Where's it at? Eight. Eight is voltage regulator. So it should have going into it V and H. And V is the replaceable fuse holder. And it should be green. And that's what we have, green. So that goes into one side of it. And then gray, which is H, and that comes out of it. So those two are, in fact, these two are the voltage regulator wires. But we got to figure out what kind of regulator we're going to use. We don't know where those go. H goes to directly to, H goes directly to the alternator, and H is the gray one. H is gray. Then the green one goes down to the ignition switch. 51, right? On number 20. 20 is the lock switch. That's the key switch. So it gets its power from there, but then has a fuse up here. That is kind of odd, really. It has, it's unfused all the way until it gets under the dash to this voltage regulator. Uh, so strange. And I guess it grounds through the plate. So it's just an in and out thing. I'm not sure about that. Off the alternator, then we have S, which goes, where does S go? S goes down this way. It goes to another terminal of the light switch. So that would be your keyed trigger to show, to tell it to charge would be the S. I believe. And then this one with the fuse would be the return circuit charging. H goes directly there. And then M would go to the battery. M is, what color is M? Brown. So brown leaves the alternator and goes directly to the battery. So that's your hot all the time. Hot all the time. S M is hot all the time, but then F, that's how the key switch gets its power, question mark. That's sure strange, because it would have to, because L, no, it gets its power from L. L and M. So a hot wire goes from the, key, from the battery to the key switch at L. And then it also goes from the battery to the alternator at M, but then it also goes to S to this terminal. That is weird. I don't get... I'm not seeing what we're doing there. G goes through 7. 7 is the relay indicator. So 7 is the relay for indicator. I don't know. I would assume that that is this, and this relay makes the dash light come on for charging. Because we have A, which is light blue. There's a light blue. We have HR, which is gray and red. We have that. We should have a yellow, which is G, yellow. So that is what this is. This is for the charge indicator. I'm not getting how this is hooked up, though. That is so screwy. We're going to have to study on that more later. It's just too much to handle. I hear that the wind is going to try to tear off a piece of roof tonight. That's nice. Thanks, wind. Well, as you can see, this is quite the puzzle. Now, I did get, I think I did get a while ago, in town I got two more special bolts to hopefully bolt up hydraulic system 
then we got to fill it with oil. You can see how this quickly gets to be an overwhelming project. Like it really, it just, it's, it's a bit much. I did learn something though in the comments from a viewer that uh, fuel stop rod and it hangs kind of on that pin. That pin actually moves. And if you push in on the fuel stop rod, it will move that pin. And he said that that adjusts the timing and it makes it easier to start when it's cold. I did not know that. That's kind of a handy thing to know. I need to read that book more and see if it actually says that because I would have never known. I didn't take the time to read that. Uh, but anyway, kind of neat. So I don't know what to do here next. Like I said, it's just so overwhelming. Like I just, it's hard to even get started because you're so overwhelmed. It just, it makes me want to do nothing. I really though, I think want to pour antifreeze in it just to see if everything's gonna hold. And you might say that's foolish, why are you wasting antifreeze? But it's winter time still, and I don't want to get caught with no antifreeze in it at all. So I think that's gonna be the, the first thing I do. Because if this leaks, then we've got more homework to do. And I flushed this all out which I didn't videotape, but there was some crud in there, like mouse nest and stuff. So I flushed it back and forth from both ends until I got everything out. So hopefully this radiator will still do us good, but we'll have to see. Let's do it this way. Let's give you a cinematic view of pouring antifreeze. I basically I think I want to just pour part of it and then go fill this jug with water. How far is that? I think a little more. All right. I think I will go fill this jug with water and pour it in there. I might try to find another empty jug that has just water in it because I have a whole nother gallon of uh, gallon. I have a whole nother gallon of antifreeze here. So I'll go get some water and then we will continue this adventure. Okay, we got water now. So we're gonna pour water in. To equal out what we just poured in. So that should be 50-50 so far of what I got in. And then I got a jug of 50-50 here, mixed. So. It's even better when you spill it. We'll have to look up the capacity and see what we got. Because it's bound to be, well, I don't know. This cooling system might hold four gallons. I don't know. I don't think it's that big, but I might be wrong. So we've basically, we've got two gallons of stuff in now. Uh, so now we can keep going. If you buy antifreeze, I've probably said this before, but make sure you buy full strength. Why would you want to pay for water? You can do what I just did and mix it yourself. It's not that hard. All you got to do is have another container that you can empty out half of the antifreeze in for the first go round. And then you can pre-mix your jugs and have them ready to go if you want 50-50. So... Don't get caught up in terrible marketing, trying to sell you stuff for twice as more. Switch back to this. I hear it gargling, so. Okay, so that is 
a total of we're gonna have a total of three gallons in it here in a second I believe right two and a half gallons no three and a half gallons yeah okay that is actually three and a half gallons of stuff because we had uh, a half empty jug I refilled plus the other empty jug of water so three and a half gallons and it is right darn near towards the top so now we will time will tell whether or not this is actually going to stay so we'll let this sit uh, so far I think it looks like we don't have any major leaks but you never know so we'll continue on our journey now I'm thinking that what I want to do next is actually get that hydraulic stuff sealed up. And now for that affair, I have to dig in my new parts pile here that I ordered for it and get the O-rings because I don't know what I did with them. They're somewhere in this box providing that the wind hasn't blown them far away because O-rings are not heavy. It is possible that. Okay, that is probably a bag of some O-rings. Ten pack of O-rings. And another ten pack of O-rings. So I think that feels really huge. Those are the O-rings. They sent ten of those, I bet, that seal that hydraulic filter. Good grief. So there should be another, yeah, here's another pack. That's fine, O-rings are cheap. And that's one thing I learned from the dealer that I worked at. He kept a tremendous amount of O-rings on hand, every size imaginable. And he told me once that, you know, that was one thing that was a minimal investment for them, but it paid off big because it kept customers happy because there's nothing more frustrating than being shut down because you need a, you know, 30 cent o-ring so that's a good idea so now i guess we will start with this pressure side and do this attach this on i need to i guess crawl under and look up and see if this is clean because i can't tell from here can you tell is that clean I think it needs just a, a going over anyway. Let's get the uh, magical spray. Okay, we really want to wait a minute now because that brake clean is not the healthiest for the rubber. That's a pretty good surface, isn't it, for you to sit and still see what's going on? So these are too big. We'll play Goldilocks here. These should be just right. But I don't want them to blow away. Let's give it a gentle, just a gentle little opening. Now. Does that feel like it's up in there? Kind of does. Are you in there, O ring? Okay, these are actually shoulder bolts, so don't lose those. And also, you know, they're the funky metric thread, so you really have to be careful. You're getting a double whammy on stuff. Let's not drop the washer down in the pump. We don't want to spend three quarters of an evening fishing that out. Once we get this on there, I think I can tweak this where it's not under quite so much pressure. I think the problem is right now, it's just so, it's been hit when I, when I was putting the motor in, I think I must have, I know I did, I know I bumped into it, but I must have tweaked it enough where 
it's not wanting to stay. And that ain't cool. Now, let's put this back on. O-ring is up in there. So we're looking good. We're going to gently turn this down so we don't vibrate our O-ring loose. on that other side instead of a wrench but that's fine we can go wrenching it literally needs to go like this now FYI this is kind of a stupid design I don't like this I wish they had done something like on the, well, I can't say that that was original either, but I wish that they had made an adapter piece and then switched to like a hose fitting. So you could easily maneuver this and you could easily service this and you didn't have to worry about, uh, you know, bending this line while you're taking the motor loose. I just... I don't think somebody was thinking too clear. Now, before I put the other end on, which I need to get to here, I need to check and make sure that that is clean and it is not. Oh my gosh, is that a mess. I don't know how to show you, but deep inside there is some trash and I don't like it. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try this. I got a rag stuffed in the hole of the down. So I'm going to try that first. How did I do? I forgot my handheld light too, which is a bummer. Because I really like that thing. There's still some trash in there. I think we need to stuff the rag in and keep trying. Uh, I guess as long as it sits on the bottom, when I put the screen in, it'll keep it from going in the pump, but it's gonna be dirty right away. But we're gonna work on that and then we'll get this buttoned up. Okay, I've kind of reached the point of where I don't, what I don't know won't hurt me. So I got it clean, I think it'll work. I'm gonna get this buttoned up. I'm not sure what this is, if it was supposed to clamp to this other line. It's kind of got a kick up on it. Makes me wonder if that's where it'll end up, like it was able to, I don't know. We'll figure that out later. We're mainly interested in this right now. So we'll get that pulled up and put it on. Do we have enough brain power for this? No, no we do not. But it's sure nice to pretend that we do. We need another washer. We got that. We need an O-ring of the correct size, which we were working on a minute ago before we changed our mind. Okay. We will get some grease. Stick this in there. Can't be any worse than it was, right? Now, this part makes me nervous because, well, uh, I guess it's closer than I thought. One thing I don't like is having to go on the ground to see what's happening. And that seems to be a common theme here lately. By lately, I mean my entire life. Having to lay in the dirt to figure something out. And I don't want to do that. Oh. 
Oh, that's so close. At least from what I can see. I wonder if the back side would go first. I wonder if it's twisted. I think it will. I think I just hit on a, a winning secret. The secret of success. Nope, I didn't. I think that will work, but I need to be much more prepared than I just was. I need to have my stuff in order, ready to go, ready to turn in some threads. And I'm going to put a long extension on it, just so I can get out to where I'm working. So, there. So I'm going to hold that with my okay it just doesn't seem quite right yet I'm not I'm not sold on this I want to make sure my battery cable is not pinched make sure that's the way it should be. Holy shite. This is very much not right. I don't think I'm having a pleasant experience. One star would not come here again. We all know what the crowning achievement here is going to be. That's going to be stripping out the threads on the pump. So that we end up having to buy a new hydraulic pump. If we do that, then we can say we were a success. Boy, I don't like the way this is going. I don't like how tweaked those lines were. Maybe they know something I don't though. Maybe they're much more resilient than what I think. Boy, I wonder how tight you go before you twist them off. Probably about right there. Jeez, what a terrible thing. I mean, I don't know. If it does leak, it's not going to leak fast. But I'm worried about this connection here. I think it was awfully, awfully messed up. And I hope... I hope that it doesn't uh, do bad things. Now, I wonder if this thing here was meant to hold this thing here. No, I see what it was. It was to bolt right to that hole there. That's a long ways away, though. Unless there was a spacer in it. That's going to be a good question for our field trip when we go to that other tractor and look at it what the story is with this you know was it bolted out here with a spacer I think that would make sense but I don't know for now we're gonna just call that enough and we'll put the, let's put the screen in here filter and then we'll bolt the end on so, the filter is basically just a screen. Ooh, and it even came with an O-ring. How nice of them. There's a number that they sent. I did not have to 
uh, I should I wouldn't have had to buy the whole bunch that I did uh, okay let's get the end cap here we're not prepared that's our biggest problem in life unpreparedness that is the opposite of the Boy Scouts. Unprepared. Okay, we don't have a place to put this. Let's, can you watch it? No. Can't even do that for me. Good grief. Bunch of freeloaders. Okay, come on. Now, we need something to dig this old O-ring out. We have nothing handy to reach for. There. Okay, old O-ring out. We must clean this up. This is not appropriate. So, let's give it a quick, quick R brushing. All right, grease again. We learned our lesson earlier about needing grease. Boy, I don't like those O-rings at all. I wonder if the factory ones are better. Let's experiment since we now have 10 of them. Okay, can we get one out? Okay, so let me show you. There's the O-ring that they sent. I don't know that that's perfect. Looks too small. Now we're going to dig that out and then we will try one of the Agco ones that I bought. But now, there we go. Okay. Maybe I'm worrying about nothing. Let's set that down. Let's put on an Agco one. And it's exactly the same. So obviously, it does not matter. Apparently, well, see, again, we don't know that whatever this came off of was that they had the right one that day. They might have lost it and been hoping for the, for the best. Okay, now, another sad story is we only have one bolt. So we're going to have to quickly find another. And I should have some in my... In my bucket of stuff. Let me quickly look here. I've got all kinds of stuff in my bucket. Now, what size could it be? Is it this size? I think it is. I think that's the one we want. Now, is that a 12? is the next question because that's what we've been using is it a 12 there we go I think we got her licked here probably should go even you know maybe probably be a good idea we don't have any hydraulic oil though I guess in it we also don't really understand where to put that in at. I'm thinking it's all a common sump, so it digs out of the rear end. But, who knows? I'm just, I'm, I know now, I know enough. I know enough to realize that as soon as we put oil in, it's going to start leaking everywhere. And this is going to be junk because that's another $400. And why not spend that, you know? I mean, I, I just foresee that is coming. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but don't get your hopes up. Also, I'm sorry if this is going to be the end of another part of this, but I really don't think people want to sit and watch an hour at a time of me scratching my head not understanding Italian so we'll probably call that the end of this part and as always thank you for watching and hopefully 
I'll see you in the next one, and hopefully that is the one where we will get it to run because we're just darn near out of things to do to it. So we got to straighten out fuel system. we got to straighten out wiring a little bit, just enough to get us going. And then hopefully, As always, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss whatever comes next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.